I thought Ricardo Pepe was a key catalyst to why they got this result outside of the goal alone. Talk to me about him because right now, the more I see him perform and the more confidence that I see him get, he looks like the guy that I think might should or should be starting that for was us. Against, that was against might PSV, by the way. And he was yeah. he, he made the team of the week in, in, in the area divisi, which is no easy task on scoring no. a goal. Like his impact over nine uh, over his playing time was amazing. Uh, well, just watching Jesus Ferreira, who is su supposed to the number one right now, he played like a midfielder in the playoffs. He didn't play like a striker. He he was level with with you know at times the defensive midfielder Kinyon. And Ariola and and the other winger uh, were were both higher than uh, Jesus Ferra. So for me, if I'm watching a player thrive in in Holland, which is Ricardo Pepe right now, he's doing all of those things that we're going to need from our striker. Play off the defender's back shoulder, also checking deep, hold up play, being strong, knowing what that means to keep possession for your team. They're playing PSV, obviously a a, a top two usually team in, in the, the Dutch league every year. Ruud van Nistelrooy coaches these guys well. And here you have a player playing against these guys and knowing how to survive, how, how to win, how to beat the better team. And the tactics are spot on for Ricardo Pepe in this match, just being able to hold up, check, run into space. But defensively as well, the pressure. I know Greg Berhalter loves both sides of the ball, being able to dictate the pressure for everyone behind you. He did that, and he's able to win the ball back just with his pressure. The more and more I watch him play and the more he's he's continuing to gain confidence and also develop from the playing time, the more I think he should be starting and should be the number one heading uh, into that game against Wales. Whereas Jesus Ferra, for me over the past you know couple of weeks, month or so, I'm seeing him not – continue to excel there was a period where he was excelling he's playing off the back shoulder making runs now he's checking too deep he's, you think he's, he's trying to do too do you think he was trying to do too much i feel like if you're trying to if you're dropping too deep and you play that high because you're trying you're trying to control the game as uh, as opposed to letting the game come to you does that make sense maybe it, it does make sense but the whole the whole point i think of 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 the nine for the national team is you have to create space for the midfielders the midfield is the strongest part of the u.s men's national team it's the it's the core for us you need to give them space to run into if they beat their one player and you're too high now you're bringing a center back if not two because they don't they don't they don't have to be fearful of a pace you're not threatening them so they can come high and if your outside or your outside wingers are tucked in, which Christian Pulisic has been doing, he's coming in to check to get on the ball. You have no deep threats, so that's why Timothy Way I think is really important that he starts for us because he gives us that threat. But I'd say more importantly, now Ricardo Pepe, being in form and fit and playing and scoring goals, has to play because he he will make runs in behind. And if yeah. you if you congest that middle and clog it, you're taking away all our our playmaker space. So. Uh, for me, I think at the moment, I'm really push. I'm, I'm leaning towards Ricardo Pepe. I mean, I, I was I watched Jesus Ferra continue to grow, and I was I, I'm advocating for him because he's doing well. He he's done nothing to lose the job, but at at certain point, you have to take it up a notch. I was hoping that this playoff series, we'd see him rise to the occasion. Oh, we're playing uh, Austin, Texas rivalry. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna help my team get over the hump, and, and he just he just wasn't effective. No, he wasn't effective, and and that's disappointing for him, and, and he's probably seen some of his minutes evaporate given how well some of the other number nines are playing. And also, for everybody that might be joining us for the first time, we think that Jordan Pifok should be on the team, but we're talking about players that we think that Greg Berhalter will most likely start and or play because we're big Jordan Pifok fans here, but uh, and he's doing well for Union Berlin in, in the Bundesliga, but we still feel like he's a situational player. Well, if we're down a goal, we need to whip crosses, and he'd be the Gabe, player. I was faster. <laughs> Charlie Davies answering questions about who is faster between him or Timo Weah. That's fantastic. Oh, crazy, because uh, I was oh. faster than both. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> but what's crazier is that Jonathan Borsi was even faster than you, Heath. All right, so oh, yeah. one of my things. <laughs> you, just, you just took him uh, out right kidding. there. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah that's seriously. That's part of my two charm, my two-foot tackle. <laughs> What I, what I really loved about Ricardo Pepe, and then I'm going to throw it over to uh, Ricardo Pepe's number one, Stan Heath Pierce, was that he had some good hold-up play under pressure when he did drop deep. And he would play it off of his shoulder, which unlocked some of our central – or Groningen central midfielders to, to attack that space that was then by him coming in, which ultimately, when I saw those kind of uh, link-up plays, 
is where Eunice Musa and Weston McKinney are going to pick up the ball. And when they can get the ball and run at a back line, and the wingers, I thought, for Groningen did an excellent job of staying higher, to your point, uh, Charlie, of getting that verticality. You can't lose that. I thought in some of the games, most recently Japan and Saudi Arabia, those are the most recent, where we had our striker who was alone up there, and when they would drop in, there was still nobody in advance of that particular player. And that, that just makes everything a lot more congested and tight and harder to play through. So that needs to be up there. Our wingers have to be uh, up high and pushing that line up as high as possible. So it creates those gaps in midfield. But I thought Ricardo Pepe, this whole the play was immense. And if that can happen consistently for us, I like that because it brings more of our talented and, and attack more, uh, more of our talented attacking players into the game. Heath. Well, uh, when I think about classic, our, our historical national team, right? Always having a striker that you can get the ball to big or small, and more often than not, they're going to win that duel to either draw a foul, keep the ball for you. And then when I think about top strikers around the world, right? Uh, um, Benzema, uh, when I think about um, um, Lewandowski, they're known for scoring all their goals. But if you watch Benzema move on the field, if you watch Lewandowski, they are almost 100% every single game at holdup play. You put it into them and they're scrapping, they're dueling, maybe they're off balance, but they're so good at getting that touch first, getting it down and laying it off. And that's something that this national team has always lacked. When Ricardo Pepe is on the field for this national team, though, he tends to be the best at holdup play, of getting the ball, laying it off, little flicks, little things that break pressure in some way. Um, and, and he's good at that, getting a toe on it in a, in a 50-50, doing those little things that keep the team moving in the right direction, holdup play, turnovers, because we need to be able to, at times, whether it's in the World Cup or otherwise, Lump a ball up and know that we can scrap for it, get up underneath for second balls, or get a ball into the corner and know that they're going to make the right decision with it. We've struggled with that, and I think that's been a huge issue. We talk about, oh, yeah, you know, four touches in the first half or five touches in the first half, or they didn't do anything in the first half. Our strikers, because, one, I don't think we've ever trusted that that we have a target there that, that can relieve pressure for us in a way that we've seen in the past, past, uh, past strikers for the national team. And two, finding a way to have that interactivity. If I'm a center back and I can lump a ball up to a uh, center forward who can hold the ball up, lay it off, I know that it's like, okay, that's one option. Now maybe I don't want to use that option. I want to play through the lines in some other way. It's just other ways in which we can bring our strikers into the game and those strikers can contribute to the way that we want to play. And Ricardo Pepe, I still think, is is better at it than the other strikers that we have, given you know, PFOC, I, 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 I do believe, can do that. But yeah. I'm curious for both of you. When you were playing and you had a striker who you knew was fast and the, whatever the philosophy is, it's let's just say the coach says, I want you guys to play out of the back, no long balls, but everything's closed down and you have this striker up top who can get in behind and you know, worst case scenario, I can play this into the channel and he will get it. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's your, sometimes the first option, but at least I know I got this striker that I can rely on. How beneficial was that? And did you ever have a player, you know, that you were playing with every every week that could do that for you? That's a good question. I'm trying to harken back to I, you know, I played 50 years ago, as you guys remember. So I know, I, but you, so you played with a ton of people. <laughs> I played with a lot yeah. of people. Yeah, seriously, like running the channels. I mean, when and when Eddie Johnson was feeling it and feeling good and and open and ready to to. I, honestly, sometimes when he played, he's he's unplayable. Defenders couldn't do anything with him. And he, if he checked in, and then, and then you know he check in to know that he you're going to put it in the channel. He he was always going to get to the ball first. And so if we him and I were on the same page with that type of stuff, yeah, that's an easy way to solve some of the problems and and uh, kind of skip some of the frustration of trying to play through a congested I, midfield. That's Ryan, that is why I said I prefaced it every week, not with the national team. I said every <laughs> week. Hey. I want to know if there's a striker that they play with on club that you you knew you could they could relieve uh, pressure or stress that you you were under the press. You're like I have no options. Who can I play to? I know I can play it into the channel and this striker will get there. Jimmy, do you ever do you ever wonder what it's like to listen to this on audio when Charlie just goes rogue into the comments and just jumps <laughs> into it for people that are on the on the live show? Of just I do. People I think do. Char Charlie's just talking to a magical person sometimes. And just being like, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, well, great yeah, question. I, yeah. Uh, Ryan, <laughs> I, I I give love to the people in the chat. I I, I, I love it. I yeah. I love, I love it, that way. too. It, it I love that too. It should be interactive. It's a, it's a two way conversation, but it should. Uh, on that, I mean, there's been times, Charlie, that you're in a game, right, and the, and the game is condensed, and you know where the solution is, but nobody's looking for it, right? You know the solution's mm -hmm. over the top, and occasionally you give the like you the sign to your center back, you touch your eye of saying like this, you're pointing over the top, you're doing these things that are allowing 
me as a center back or me as a left fullback to know, hey, there's some space here. They're condensing the field. They're making it small on us. And and you as a striker knowing, hey, there's an opportunity for me here if we can execute it of giving that sign to say, hey, I'm going to check in. Or or if there's a little break when you're close on a corner kick of saying, hey, take a look over the top. You know, I'm going to check in and spin out on the next one. Mm-hmm. Next time you see it, hit that ball. And and those are the types of things that that you have to be able to do that are kind of in real time acknowledging where, you know, you know, and we know Charlie's going to always say kind of look for me uh, on every pass. I do this one. Yeah. Hey, yeah. this one. <laughs> but, but sometimes that's all it takes is being able to connect. I remember, I'm pretty sure Charlie was the goal uh, that you and I had together um, where you, you, where you finished go. it, where it was a long ball, but I, I think it was from Chad Marshall that hit me the ball over the top, but I was a left fullback and he, and he was, we had talked like, Hey man, if you can cheat up, I'm going to hit you that long ball. And I set that up. I, I we discussed that, and I was able to cheat forward. He hit that ball, got us in behind the back line. Granted, um, you know, not 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 the highest uh, level we were playing against, but those little things that happen in real time, where you can mm-hmm, communicate mm-hmm, and be like, "Hey, mm-hmm. I see something here," um, can change the whole dynamic of how you attack because it requires players on the field to see the game from different angles to sometimes know where that space or that that danger can be that can change or at least force another team to respect you. <laughs>